Welcome. This video is a short introduction to the noosphere, a new way of thinking about humans, the cosmos, and how we can create a way that we're all in a space of empowered living. And uh, what we want to uh, share with you is that Homo sapiens, us as human beings, we're hard hardwired to make sense of the world. We're, we're creating stories to answer the most fundamental questions. Why are we here? Who are we? Where do we go? And those uh, stories that we have created can fall in, in various categories. And there are certain consequences to the stories that we create as a species. The first big picture story that uh, scientists have classified as one of those meta narratives that guide humanity is a story of a path to salvation, a path towards a bigger being, oftentimes God or Nirvana or some kind of form of paradise that we have to earn in a certain way to get there. We're a potentially a fallen species in some of the narratives and we have to redeem ourselves. And in that sense, God is an almighty judge. And uh, in its extreme, it is oftentimes seen that humans are actually uh, powerless almost, but that's an extreme. Um, but there is a destination, there is a plan, there is a determination, and basically your fate is given. So in many contexts and cultures, you have almost like a fatalistic approach to life because it's planned like that. Now, this is a uh, radical positioning of the story to showcase an extreme which oftentimes leaves people disempowered in terms of making their own choices and co-creating potentially solutions around some of the bigger issues that could be at hand and at stake that could include war, that could include uh, disease, it could include uh, climate change, it can include all kinds of other contexts in which we are operating as if we cannot change our fate. Now, the second big story is the story that we could, uh, could uh, uh, share as the scientific story, in which way the scientific method has democratized how we can see the world and how we're not deterministically planned and predetermined in our actions, but we can actually understand the universe we can understand disease we can understand what's happening to us in terms of climate change and other uh, other threats to our species now in the very very uh, extreme again this story could end up in almost like a reversal of the first story where human beings end up on top and create the godlike plan and we're dominating we're the dominating species and nothing, nothing is forbidden to us. And we're glorious in that space. So it's a domi in, in, in very many ways in our last 300 years of civilization, that story has played out and is the source of much of progress in a societal context, including, for example, now the vaccine for COVID-19, et cetera. This is based on a story where we can say, we can identify, we can understand, we can do something about it. We don't have to defer to a higher power that either punishes us or in which way they predetermines um, our disease pathway. In the second story, as it has sort of manifested also at its extreme, you oftentimes see that, yes, we are godlike, <laughs> we can have a plan. Domination is the ultimate goal, power, wealth, and status may be replacing any other purpose. But at the same time, what oftentimes happens for many is that it's very difficult to find a higher purpose by ourselves. It's quote, quote unquote, the existentialist drama where we have to create a purpose for ourselves because God is dead, as Nietzsche said. There is no higher inbuilt purpose. And therefore, what happens is there's oftentimes a nihilistic approach. Nothing matters. Nothing what we do matters indeed, and we can do whatever we want. So it's almost like a nihilistic, destructive approach in its extreme. 
A third story, a third meta story is, is something that manifests itself as a combination, you could say, of both of these stories in a way that uh, the creative power of humanity is combined with a higher purpose of the original um, first story where there is a pathway to something bigger, bigger than us. And that is uh, oftentimes also credited to a uh, paleontologist, theologian called Teilhard de Chardin. And uh, he and some of his colleagues created this idea of humanity and technology together creating almost like a conscious evolutionary nervous system of humanity that's based and built upon the biosphere and the geosphere that we live on on planet Earth, but that has almost like a cosmic uh, destination. There is an omega point. There is something that we're traveling and evolving towards. We're not a fallen species. We're perfect, whole and complete as we are. And we have an intentionality to developing better, to developing ourselves, our species, the space that we live in, into something more formidable, more complex, more beautiful, and more uh, life-giving. So in that sense, that is actually a story that gets a lot more scientific support in the quantum sciences uh, will uh, speak to that, but also the paleontolog paleontological records and the cosmolo uh, cosmological uh, insights speak to that there's a constant evolution to something bigger and higher. And so this can be seen in a secular way, but it could also be seen as something that actually has and allows the space for a religious story and a religious interpretation or a spiritual interpretation. And what happens in this context of a third story, what we find is that people have a different way of relating to one another, have a different way of relating to what's happening outside as interconnected and as part of you, as part of me, as part of all of us. And it is not a nihilistic proposition. It is not a fatalistic proposition either. It is actually an invitation to a co-creative process in which we all, are important. We all are nerve cells. We all are cells that of a body, of a bigger body, of a noospheric body in which the evolution takes shape. And so if we see that there are currently some problems that humanity is facing, including climate change, social justice, etc., 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 it is actually an invitation for all of us to not lapse into, okay, we can't do anything, or let's wait for Armageddon or somebody else to come, but it's in some way an invitation for us to co-create solutions, not as the only ones that can do something, but the ones that can actually co-create a better world. Now, this might sound a little bit Pollyanna-ish, and there is a lot of evidence that that is indeed an accurate uh, story in a way that you can explain the emergence of social media, you can explain the movement towards more social justice, you can explain the movement towards uh, solutions for climate change. And at the same time, there is a strong um, dominance of the other two attitudes in which you say, we can't do anything about it. We can't do anything about climate change or it's already done, it doesn't matter what we do, it's all, we're toast, quote unquote, that's what Tom Friedman says from the New York Times, we're toast, let's party, right? And so those attitudes are not helpful. And from the context of how can we empower ourselves, this third story allows the space for us to really be not the creators, not gods, but co-creators together with each other, not dominators, but partners. And we're also not insignificant. We are very significant contributors. And so that space of interdependence, that's what this third story allows. And I invite you all to just look at that as a space where you can, you can create and co-create and be part of the solution, be empowered and enlivened to not sit back and do something together. I leave it at that, and the next couple of sessions will go into more detail how.